Hey, welcome to Five Star Guns and Gear, and today we're going to do just a little uh, upgrade video, uh, just show you how to actually add some uh, sling stud swivels. We're actually going to use that because we're going to wind up uh, adapting a plate for a pick rail. Uh, that way, I have some options of adding uh, different stuff to this particular uh, little rifle. This is one that I like to take in the woods, do a little plinking with, do a little bit of hunting with, and stuff and uh, this belongs to my wife and i want to go ahead and put it where she can have a sling if she wants to ever carry it out with us or anything so i'll show you what we're going to do we're going to add a sling right up here and a uh, sling sw swivel stud and a sl sling swivel stud down here and uh, then we will adapt this pick rail to it and this particular pick rail will allow us to have a sling swivel stud and the pick rail at the same time. It's one I just have on hand that I've had floating around for quite a while. And why not? Let's go ahead and just add it to this gun since it doesn't have anything. And I think that will uh, get us where we need. Actually get us where we can throw a bipod on here. That way if she wants to go ahead and use a bipod to help her steady or anything while she's shooting. Uh, that'll be on there as well. That way she doesn't have to use bags or anything like that. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is go ahead and uh, take this uh, gun out of the stock. Do not ever drill a stock with your gun in there. You wind up going ahead and penetrating that wood and you go into the mag tube, uh, scratch your barrel, all kinds of stuff. So if you're going to do this, take your gun apart or take it to a qualified gunsmith. That's all I'm going to say. So. We'll go ahead and start taking this out. Make sure you use the uh, right tools. And these are just bits that I got out of my Wheeler uh, uh, Gunsmith screwdriver set. I recommend that if you have any flat blades, like this does have a flat blade or a standard screw head on it. Make sure anytime you are needing a flat blade, use a hollow ground and uh, that'll actually help it bite properly. Make sure uh, you have the proper size. It'll keep you from damaging the, not only the screw, but potentially slipping, damaging your finish as well. So go ahead and start taking this trigger guard off. And then we'll have the stock by itself. Nice thing about these uh, Wheeler sets, I've had this one for a long time. It's missing a lot of bits and stuff. But you get two different shanks. So if you want a shorter one, like I'm switching over to now, kind of comes in handy. And these will fit another handle. So if you got another handle you prefer, I just like the Wheeler because they got a lot of specialty stuff in uh, their set that you will not find on a regular screwdriver set. Uh, I'll kind of show you, I can say this is missing a lot. I've had this for years and years and years. There's a lot of specialty bits in here that's for different kinds of guns uh, that you might need if you do a lot of your own home gunsmithing. Very handy to have. This one is their deluxe version. Uh, I was going to contact them because I've lost bits and broke bits over the time over the years um and try to get them replaced uh but i actually think it may wind up being cheaper just to get a new set at this point but uh for the most part i still got everything i need all right so we've got the stock out let me go ahead and set this receiver out of the way make sure if anything's fell loose like that is uh where your screw goes into the stock here it'll go in here it was uh, laying in here, so make sure you don't lose these little pieces out of here. Only thing we're going to need is the stock itself. All right, guys. All right, set that out of the way. Go ahead and take a look here. I know exactly where we want to go up here with this. So what I'm going to do, set our trigger guard out of the way. I'm going to set this up here. 
because I know I want it oriented in this position. And I'm gonna eyeball everything and get it squared up pretty good. I don't want this sticking up off the end. Uh, out the end, I want it pretty much square as I can get it. And I'm just gonna set it in here and hold it in place. And you can take any kind of punch. And I'm gonna center punch it right there. I take a look at this end, the butt end, and I know I probably want it right around here. The stud that I'm using is probably a little over an inch. It's actually three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna go three quarters inch down. I wanna make sure that I have enough clearance that I'm not gonna hit the screw that's going in holding the butt paddle on. So what I'll do, let's go ahead and just take that out. I wanna see how long of it is. Is we don't want them hitting each other. That's the point. It looks like it's probably seated in there about an inch, right about an inch, because this is beveled. So I'm just gonna put this on here, and get an idea, get clearance, and make sure they don't hit. I'm probably gonna want that sling stud right about here. Now I can trim this down where it does not go as deep in the front. We're gonna to have to do that because it's oversized, the two that I'm putting in here, and um, I'm gonna to have to cut it down. I'll do it with the uh, little rotary tool here, and we'll cut that down. But I really wanna keep as much meat as possible because I just help, I think it helps give you more support and everything. The more this is in the wood, I think it'll last longer. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna say, we're gonna probably put this right here, and I think it's gonna be fine. I think we'll be good. So bear with me, guys. I'm gonna grab one more tool that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to make sure I got my cutoff wheel, and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go about inch and three quarters on this particular gun. And I'm just gonna eyeball this and try to get it centered as possible. Made me a very, very tiny witness mark. I'm gonna try to find our center line as best as possible. And I've got that marked. So I've got it marked here and I've got it marked here. So we can move on. So what we need to do, we need to go ahead and drill both of these holes out. Uh, and this front swivel stud is a little too long. It's gonna go into the magazine tube area if we do not do something about that. So what we'll do is we'll measure, we'll see about how much we need to cut off, which we probably need to cut off about half of it. We will go ahead and drill our hole all the way through. Now to do that, a lot of people will stop short, but I'll tell you what'll happen if you are not careful when you're screwing this in, uh, you can split your stock out. So I always recommend go ahead and drill it all the way through. So what they'll hit, they'll wind up hitting a hard spot and going just a little bit too much and either they'll strip this out or um, sometimes it'll wind up putting this under too much tension here and something will get cracked out. So it's better just to go ahead and drill through. You're not gonna hurt it. And I uh, went ahead, every uh, sling swivel stud, I'll show you guys. 
make sure because I'm using two different kinds here, just two that I had in my workbench. They are different styles. Uh, this one's actually going to be covered up. I really wanted this in the front. And y'all see this is actually going to be encapsulated in here anyway. You're not going to see it. Um, and these are actually different size threads and different size shanks, different lengths. So what you just need to do is take your pair of calibers. Get you a measurement on the inside shank, not the threaded portion. You do, you do not want to measure this outside. I mean, you can to give you an idea, but you want to get the tips of your calipers. You want to go between the threads and the solid shank is what you want to be on. And like this is 0.173. And this one here, 0.147. So there's quite a bit of difference. And then you just need to find the nearest size drill bit that is under, uh, preferably not over, uh, and use that. We'll start off with a smaller bit, the pre-drill. Once we pre-drill, we'll step up to the appropriate size bits. So I'm gonna use a 153 and or 167 so 167 will be for this one 153 that's the closest I, I have right now on hand that's going to work for this if we need to step up we will step up but i think we're going to be able to get that in there without an issue i don't mind it being a little bit tight uh, i just don't want it loose that's the whole thing so all right let's get this back on the bench and after we drill this we'll determine how much we need to cut off of this one and we'll cut that off and then we'll screw these in. Simple, easy, you can reassemble your gun and you're done. So super, super simple, uh, easy to do. That way you can throw a sling on here. And like I say, when you see when I'm done, we're gonna be able to have a sling on here and we're gonna be able to have uh, a pick rail. That way we can throw a bipod or any other accessory you'd want on here. So uh, with that pick rail, uh, we're probably gonna just throw, you know, an expensive bipod on it. That way it'll get her by when she's hunting and stuff like that. So, all right, let's go ahead and take our small bit. We're going to drill, drill both of these uh, holes for our pre-drill. We'll go back here and we'll drill now guys just do the best you can to try to keep this as level as possible i've done enough of them uh, a lot of times what i'll do is uh i'll put it in the vise of the drill press pad it and i'll do it that way however with this camera and stuff it's kind of hard to do most of you guys probably don't have a drill press so it's going to be kind of difficult uh, you can also go ahead and chuck this up and just regular vise that help you out uh, but for camera purposes, we're just going to do it here on the bench. So you can see you don't have to have a lot of specialty tools to do this. A drill, drill bit, a few, few tools and you can get by.
guys. Make sure you take your time. Uh, you don't want to slip, mess up your stock. Now this one has a scuff on it, and uh, this one's been taken out a few times and used. So uh, you know you're gonna get scuffs, but if you don't want to scuff up your stock, just kind of be careful. This one, looking at it, everything's lined up pretty good. We're centered, centered down there. Everything's looking great. So we're gonna go ahead and step up to our next bit size, which in the rear, we are gonna be using this one, uh, which we've already determined. This is the drill that, bit that we're gonna step up to. And this is probably gonna be our final size, but like I say, we might go for one more size. Always wanna start with the smaller one, we can always go up. Real simple, guys. Okay, I'm gonna switch out to the other size bit. That way we can do our part. go ahead and install this rear stud and we'll try to go ahead and get it started by hand and then I'll just use the Allen key it fits pretty snug in here let me get above this that way I can get a little bit of pressure and we'll go slow. Make sure you do not scratch your stock up. Keep a hold of that Allen key because if it does fall down, well, I'll show you. You run a risk. If you're holding it, you can scratch your, your stock up. So just kind of make sure you're on top of it. I'm gonna start watching this from the side. I'm doing at this point is trying to get it flush. Now something else you can do, you actually take this back out since we've already got this threaded, add you just a little bit of glue as you can see that baby is, it's gonna be kind of hard to see probably from this angle, but it is centered. It is good. Looks really really good. We could actually recess this in just a tad more and we might do that. So, might get another turn on that. Take it out, and you could actually add a little bit of glue to it if you think that it uh, has a possibility of ever backing off. Okay, guys, this is seated in. And I'm telling you to seat it in. It's recessed in just a tad, just off of fit. Everything's lined up. 
we are good to go. I'm not going to put any glue on this. There's, it's not necessary. If you ever have an issue where they start backing out on you or anything, you always put just a little bit of glue in there and that'll help keep it in place. This is solid. So we can actually go ahead and put our butt pad plate screw back in. And as you can see, this is going to go in without any issues there. It's not going to hit. Absolutely perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna determine how much thickness we have here. Point four five. So we want a little less than that actually on this. And we will go in a little bit on this. So let's say we're going to probably do point point three six. Looks pretty good to me. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. The reason why I'm going a little bit shorter is because we will tighten this up and sink it in that wood just a tad, like we did the, the butt there. We'll get something to mark with. And mark this in a silver pen that way you can see kind of what i'm doing here Let's stick the stock right back out of the way for just a second hopefully i can see that mark on that thread we're just going to cut off to right there We're just going to use a Dremel cutoff wheel, a little brace of wheel, and uh, that's what we'll use to cut this off. I'm trying to figure out ways to show y'all how you can do this at home easy, and most people have this kind of stuff, especially a lot of people have Dremel tools, and a lot of this stuff is in your kit, so you may not have a Fordham style tool like this, uh, but it does the same thing as a Dremel. So, we can check it up in the vise over here. That's probably the best thing to do. But if you don't have a vise, I'm gonna show you another method just to hold it. Okay, I always keep scraps of leather around. So we're just gonna take a piece of leather. Wrap the head of this. Now this is gonna be covered. So this particular one, not really too worried about it. Uh, if it got scratched up, be fine. But you could take uh, some pliers, probably be best. Or you could take some vice grips. Let's go ahead and Set it in here, hold it in place while you grind that off. So we're gonna grind it off. Make sure you're using eye protection. Okay, so 
what we're gonna do right here, it's nearly all the way through. Just gonna grab another pair of pliers or whatever you got. And go ahead and just take that off just like that. And you probably could set it in there and just go ahead and sit, put it in just like that and you'll be fine. Okay. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some of these sharp edges just cleaned up just a little. That's all we're gonna need, need to do on that. And what I'll do next is I will cool this part down real quick. Just gonna dunk it in some water. You can let it set if you'd like. That way we can work with it just a little bit quicker. Not All right, and that's gonna be the final piece that we go ahead and install in the front. Now we may have to go to the next size up on this to get this to go because this is a different thread pitch and has a little bit higher tolerances so that's fine like i say you always want to go small you can always go up but it's kind of hard to add material back in that wood And do this to help it get started and we should be able to go ahead and get this in without any issue all we're doing is opening the mouth of it just a tad once we get this started we'll do the same thing we will take an allen key and we'll go ahead and finish screwing it in Something else you could do, if you don't want to take your Allen key, take something like this, that way you don't have that 90 degree leg. And it's less of a chance to be scratching your stock. As you can see, we did not drill all the way through with that bigger bit. We just got it. We already knew the other bit was going to be fine for the thread pitch. It's just really tight and it's going to be hard for that flat uh, to get started. So we just opened it up just a little bit. Okay, and we're where we need to be. And we're going to stop right there. Maybe just a tad more. Again, if you want to glue it in place, you can glue it in place. We got plenty of clearance on the inside. It's not going all the way through, even with it recessed in just slightly. Everything's straight. Everything looks good. So on this particular bipod mount, we're going to install this adapter stud that's going to go over this. Really, really simple. You can take these on and off. Um, it's got a little set screw that's going to pin this in place. So I'll show you how that goes. So like I say, we want to have the ability of still use a uh, bipod on this particular gun. And we want to go ahead as well and be able to uh, use a sling. So... Have this in place. This particular one, that's all you have to do. And it's going to be loose, and I'll show you how everything's going to cinch up in just a second. This is just gonna slide through here. Then we got an adapter screw. It's gonna just go ahead, got it on backwards. Sorry guys. 
wasn't paying attention, paying attention to the camera, but it does have a recessed area right there. What that does is help make sure you don't hit these screws that's going through here. Now, that slack's gonna be taken out of here in just a second, you'll see that. You can get you a little spanner and actually tighten this up tighter. I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And that gets us to that point right there. So now we have the advantage of the pick rail, the uh, swivel stud, and we have our rear stud installed. So that was pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty painless. We just need to go ahead and reassemble the gun and we're ready to go. All right, guys, when you start reassembling, make sure you get all your parts back in. So this particular one actually will be seated right there. And while that's in there, uh, one of the screws for that front trigger guard screw on this side does not have anything to screw into. So that's actually what that's gonna screw into. You do have uh, tapped areas for the front and rear, rear. So it's basically for that middle area is what that is for. Let me get rid of this drill. And we'll start putting everything back together. Easy peasy, guys. All right, we're back and we're done. I went ahead and uh, off camera went ahead and mounted this uh, bipod. It's really easy. Just one screw through the pick rail. The pick rail has one slot on it. Um, and uh, just make sure you tighten everything up. Good thing about your bipod, you can put your, uh, your sling, you can attach it here. You still can attach it here. There's enough room up here that you can get uh, most slings the little tips in here and actually clamp to that if you wanted to but you can always take this off if you're not using the bipod and you still have that stud so you can take this on and off at will everything works great and now she has a gun that she can have her sling on everything's back together things good to go everything's properly tightened up and we're good to go on this little uh, Marlin 22 here. So this right here, uh, I guess we've had it for her for about 10 years and she's taken out a few times. She likes this little gun. It's actually pretty accurate. It's a pretty good little gun, uh, not too shabby. Um, this is the uh, Marlin 60. Yeah, it takes a mag tube and everything. And maybe we'll take this to the range and just do a little review. On this particular one, you know, it's been a long time since I've mounted the scope. It's just got a little three by nine by 32, I believe is what this is. Uh, not a big scope, but plenty for what it is. It does good. It's a very inexpensive scope. I think it's a Simmons, if I recall. And, uh, you know, it works pretty good. So uh still have the uh iron sights on it that way if we ever wanted to convert back or she had a problem in the field and this had to come off still have the option of having the uh, iron sights uh so those are still on there but now she's got a stable bipod she's got a mount uh where she can put her her sling and we went ahead and installed the sling stud in the back as well so we're ready to go this thing's been beat up a little bit, but it's a good old gun. Uh, hasn't been fired a whole lot, but uh, I figure four or 500 rounds been through this, not a ton, but uh, it's a good little hunting gun and she likes it and that's all that matters. So it is upgraded now. We got everything ready to go. This is rock solid here. 
And like I say, it's really easy to unscrew this, loosen this up, and uh, we can take this off. So uh, not too shabby. This is gonna work. And we may upgrade her bipod later on if she has any problems, but you know, it's a cheap little bipod, but for 22, I think it'll be fine, especially as little as this, that she'll be using it. If we see any issues, we'll just upgrade it. And the good thing about it, we've already got everything mounted. Uh, that way we can just take this off, put a replacement one on it if in the future we need to. But I think that's going to work. And that's all I got for you today, guys. That's all I want to do is uh, just go over uh, how you can just install some sling swivels easily on the bench. Tell you what, I've got another gun that... Uh, probably going to go ahead and put a pick rail on it already has a sling stud on there and again we could put a different kind of mount just like this on there and be done uh, but we cannot put actually this one on i'll tell you why uh, it has a mo it, the uh, sling swivel is actually injection molded in that stock and it's recessed back so you really couldn't put this in there it would not fit i already know that uh, so I'm going to show you a way around that where you can keep that sling, sling uh, stud that's molded in that stock and go ahead and add a pick rail. So what we'll do is we'll just get a piece of pick rail like this. You know what? We'll probably use this pick rail because it's, it's a good size for these little bipods. i got an extra one of these, another one of these laying around. Uh, I think it's still in the package. Uh, I'll dig it out. So y'all look for that episode. It'll be coming out shortly after this, and I'll show you how to mount just a pick rail directly on um, a synthetic stock. Easy. Uh, again, you can do it on your bench. I really didn't want to show y'all setting everything up in the vise. I wanted to show y'all, if y'all didn't have a vise, how you can do this. And this, you know, since I'm, I don't do professional gunsmithing anymore on other people's guns, I don't have an FFL. Uh, I may have done a different approach and set this, I would have set this definitely up. I would have drilled this in my drill press. Uh, but I want to show y'all on one of, one of my wife's gun, one of my guns, uh, that, and not a customer gun, that you can actually do it on your own. You don't have to have any specialty tools. Have a couple of drill bits is all you need. Uh, set of calipers if you have them, if not, I highly recommend it, but I mean, you could probably even get away with not even get doing the calipers, just kind of sizing your uh, drill with the shank, uh, the non-threaded part of your uh, stud, the screw part. You can kind of eyeball things. I mean, there's ways to do it where you can actually do a lot of this work on your own. Uh, it's ideal to take it to a gunsmith or if you have the proper tools, but if you don't, you can still get it done and do a good solid firm job that you're not going to have any problems with like this i would not send my wife out with this if i didn't think that it wasn't going to last so uh, everything's good to go on this do need to clean this gun up a little bit uh other than that uh i think this is ready to go guys again if you're subscribed thank you if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing hit that bell notification that way you know when we're putting out new content uh, helps us really with the channel and everything. God bless you guys. And as always, I will catch you on the next episode.